Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about computer architecture course logistics. Uh, this should be a relatively short video. Uh, and hopefully, uh, there's going to be some review anyway, based on what you've talked about in the first lecture of the course. So remember, uh, one of my major goals in this course is to teach, enable, and empower you to uh, really understand how a computing platform works. But on top of that, Hopefully you will understand how decisions made in hardware affect the software programmer as well as the hardware designer. As we discussed, I take the expanded view of computer architecture going from all the way uh, from algorithms to devices. And you will especially look at decisions that cross boundaries. And a lot of decisions that are made in hardware affect the programmer and vice versa. Uh, uh, decisions made in software affect the hardware designer. Uh, plus decisions made in the interface affect both in the end as we discussed in the first lecture. So we're going to talk a lot about that, and hopefully you will be empowered to understand the reasons for this. And I think through this, you will uh, learn how to think critically in solving problems because we will cover the trade-offs of how to make the decisions uh, and how, uh, on, uh, how to design a computer that works. Hopefully this will enable you to also think naturally, think broadly across the levels of transformation and not be home, uh, basically not... Uh, not be rat holed into a, sing, a single part of the transformation layer. So I, it's, it's best if you consider yourself as a system designer or an architect in the end, what it, which is what a system designer is, uh, who is not rat holed into software or rat holed into hardware or rat holed into somewhere in the transformation hierarchy, but can broadly think about the levels of transformation and make different design decisions. And of course, I think understanding and analyzing uh, how to make tra different trade-offs in design is important, and we're going to see a lot of different trade-offs in this course, from memory systems to interconnects to uh, different multiprocessors to heterogeneity to accelerators to uh, genomics, bioinformatics accelerators to different things. Basically, we will cover a lot of things here, and hopefully, there with the, with the hands-on components uh, of this course, the uh, labs. Uh, you will be able to apply the above and see some of it is in action. Of course, labs will not be able to cover everything that we talk about in this course. In fact, we will start with something really simple like a cache lab. Uh, believe, me or, believe me, that will be a simple lab. Uh, because Actually, I believe all labs are simple once you understand the fundamentals, but cache lab is something you may have done in the past also uh, in, in some prior computer architecture or digital design course. Uh, and you will be able to apply some of these uh, in your lab projects, as well as homeworks where we will actually talk about trade-offs uh, quite a bit. And you also use your critical thinking skills to actually review papers and some of the homework. So uh, the, the entire course is really designed to uh, ensure that you get the best of everything that's put on the slide. Okay, uh, we already discussed who I am. I'm, I don't need to introduce myself again, but I've been at ETH for five years and I have significant industry experience. So I'm going to bring some of that industry experience into this course and talk about how some of these different design decisions have affected real people's lives in the industry plus of course other other people's lives who depend on the industry also everybody depends on for example chips that are built by some of these companies that you see over here basically i worked quite a bit with intel and amd and i started the computer architecture group at microsoft research and then worked at google and vmware so i i like covering the uh, uh, large part of the stack if not the entire stack uh, in terms of uh, uh, understanding where the industry is going and hopefully I'll bring some of that experience but uh, and uh, you can reach me with this email address uh, and you already know my research and teaching interest which we talked about in the first lecture you can brush up on these if you're interested in the uh, by looking at the first lecture so this is the teaching team it's a large teaching team so that you can get access to many people but it's also uh, this is not an uh, necessarily a, a, an easy course we have five lab assignments and some number of homeworks and uh, only one exam. But this is uh, basically uh, the teaching team will help uh, uh, help you grow during the course of the course. And also uh, they, uh, they have other things to do than just teaching as well. So uh, the large teaching team enables us to actually get uh, you hopefully the best uh, of everyone. Uh, please get to know them and their research. One uh, is the head, head TA, Jisung is the kind of wise head, let's say. Uh, they, they all work with me, so they are all, all uh, doing research in computer architecture or some related area. So some of them actually will be presenting some of their work also in some of the sessions that we will discuss since this is an advanced course. Uh, and I think some of the research that we do is actually really uh, at the core of what I consider computer architecture. So hopefully 
you will get to meet them. But if you're interested in research in computer architecture, or if you read a paper that's written by one of them, and you may actually stumble upon that during the course of this course, uh, please feel free to talk with them. Uh, getting to know them uh, may be a good idea, uh, especially in, uh, in the long run. Okay, so let me very quickly go over the major high-level goals of this course. Basically, I would like you to understand the principles and the precedents, and I think these are very much related to each other, but precedents uh, may not be principled, so it's good to think about that also. And based on such understanding, hopefully you will be enabled to evaluate trade-offs of different designs and ideas and develop principal designs going into the future, better designs uh, to improve human lives, and hopefully develop novel out-of-the-box designs. So that's that's the ultimate goal, of course. Can you actually generate some novelty based on what you've seen? Uh, I mean, my, uh, my goal is to get to you to all of that places. Of course, novelty may not be easy to come. I think in, in, the, in the first view, you will need the basics and then Hopefully, novelty will come uh, later on also. And the focus, as I mentioned earlier, is also on principles, precedents, and how to use them for new designs. Basically, we will understand the principle. We will understand the past, uh, what has been done. We'll understand, hopefully, learn from the mistakes of the past. And I will give you examples from real life and a real industry for that. And uh, hopefully, we will, we will uh, look at what are the trade-offs that people have made and what are the trade-offs that could be made to actually uh, do a better new design. And of course, the context is in computer architecture, but as I mentioned multiple times uh, over uh, the last two lectures, uh, computer architecture is very fundamental in my opinion, and a lot of the design decisions actually are things that uh, with, with some tweaks that you would, you would really see in uh, real life also. And we discussed, for example, uh, the, uh, the, the relationship with economics and scheduling and resource allocation. And these are concepts that appear in many parts of human lives also. So, uh, so you can, you'll be able to think broadly in this case. And again, I think this, uh, what I just said furthers my point for this slide. This course may seem like it's only computer hardware, but I, I, I actually don't believe that. We will talk a lot about hardware, no question about that. I mean, a good chunk of computer architecture is hardware. But it's, the course is actually much broader than that. You will, and you will be much more capable if you master both hardware and software and the interface between them, especially today when uh, high efficiency and high performance can be achieved only through this expanded view of computer architecture, through software, hardware, algorithm, devices, co-design. And even if you're not doing co-design, which I think is really important going into the future, all major companies, all a lot of the startups are doing co-design today, for example, you can develop better software if you understand the hardware, and you can design better hardware if you understand the software. At least having an understanding of these different levels of the uh, transformation hierarchy is really important. And of course, you can design a better computing system if you understand both. And that's, uh, that's, that's what's happening in a good chunk of the industry today. Okay, hence the expanded view. We've talked about this multiple times with real examples. And we will see this uh, expanded view of computer architecture going uh, spanning all the way from algorithms to devices uh, as we progress through the lectures. And I will point out specific examples of it. And you may be actually... Uh, you may, you may be able to see this actually before I point this out to you as well, right? So, so hopefully this is something exciting because I don't want, uh, in, in, in the end, we don't want to be narrow-minded and just look at a specific aspect of it. This course is not a specialized logic course or microarchitecture course uh, or system software course. This course is really a computer architecture course that's uh, interpreted broadly uh, and interpreted uh, uh, with the modern constraints that we have today. So we're, think of it as being at the cutting edge right now. What are the computer architectures we should be thinking of today and we should be thinking of uh, designing tomorrow? And what are the principles to, uh, uh, to use in those designs? Because the industry is actually a good chunk of the industry is doing uh, what I just suggested doing. So it's good to think about that going into the future and how they evolve. Okay, so what do I expect from you? Now this is more of the logistics. Uh, required background, basically digital design and computer architecture is something that I expect that you would know. Uh, if, you're, if you're coming from ETH, of course, uh, you probably have taken this course with me or with someone else. Uh, if you're coming from the computer science department, with me probably. Uh, but basically this is important and uh, you, uh, if, if, some, if there are some concepts that we will assume most of the time you will be okay, I think, but if there are some concepts you will assume, for example, for lab one, you will need to know about caches. 
Uh, you should know about caches by this point, I think, this is a master's level course, so uh, I, I think that's not something unreasonable to expect. But for some reason, if you think you need to brush up on the knowledge, then you can go back, for example, to my digital design and computer architecture course and basically find out where those lectures, uh, find out those lectures that cover um, caches, and you can, you can basically uh, look at YouTube and uh, watch the video, basically. And it's better, actually, if you take it from me, because clearly... Uh, I, uh, this is a continuation of that course. Uh, so I would recommend looking into the digital design and computer architecture uh, site. Actually, uh, let's see if we can do it uh, right now. Uh, maybe, uh, let's see how do you do it basically. Okay. Uh, let me do this. So you can, for example, find, uh, I haven't updated my website yet, but you can easily go to where I teach. You can do to go to my teaching over here and then click on digital design and computer architecture over here. And then you can look at lectures and schedule and you can easily search for caches if you want. Basically memory hierarchy and caches, right? If you want uh, to improve your background on caches, just plus press that one and you will get caches lecture for you. And you can click on the PowerPoint. Looks, looks like my computer is not very fast. It's, it's interesting, yeah. Okay, I cannot even stop it right now. Okay, I did stop it. But basically, uh, this website will will be uh, will help you, I believe, uh, in uh, many ways if you need that background. I will assume most of it, but clearly we will not use all of what we covered in digital design and computer architecture. Some of it may actually be repeated. We will, for example, talk about graphics processing units in this course also, but the overlap will not be very high between the two courses overall. Uh, but if you're generally interested in computer architecture, I would definitely go into uh, this course uh, as well if you haven't taken or if, you have, if you've taken something that's, that is not as comprehensive uh, in the past. Okay, so uh, also you, you will need to know about programming, but that's, I think, expected. A lot of our assignments are in C. Uh, we got rid of the RTL assignments, uh, but... Uh, uh, and we're not going to introduce them this semester, but in a future incarnation of the course, uh, you may actually see that. And hopefully you will have an open mind and willing to take in many exciting concepts and willing to take crit think critically. So of course I would expect you, uh, these are some, uh, the rest is I, th I think I'm going to go through relatively quickly, except point out some really important ones. Uh, hopefully you will learn the material thoroughly. Uh, and again, there's no requirement in terms of attending lectures, but I think they're going to be really important for you to understand the concepts. And again, uh, you don't need to attend the lectures while they're being given. Uh, you, can, you can watch them at your leisure, uh, at your convenience. Uh, doing the readings will be important, doing the exercise and doing the labs. I think uh, this is an eight credit course. It's, not, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the highest credit courses, as you probably uh, have guessed. So it's, not, uh, it's, it's going to cover a lot of material. And, uh, and probably you will work hard with a lot of ETH courses, that's true, but I think with 8th grade courses that's also true, or more so true. And hopefully it'll be a fun and informative course that you could uh, point to in the future. Other people who have taken this course in the past actually talk about it very positively. And uh, uh, when I used to teach uh, at CMU, uh, people actually uh, used to study this course online also. And uh, I know a lot of people who've gotten uh, good jobs by actually working hard and really understanding the material, even though they may not have actually uh, been uh, in person in class uh, with me because they were not attending CMU, for example. But that's true for the ETH course also, so I would suggest uh, putting your best in as much as possible. Okay, please ask questions, take notes and participate. I know the online environment doesn't make it easy, but let's try to make the best out of it. Uh, and I think uh, with Piazza, this will be awfully better. Yeah, and uh, perform the assigned readings. There will be a lot of readings. You don't need to do all of them, but if you do all of them, you will get a lot more out of the course for sure. And to participate online, uh, hopefully in lecture, uh, but as I mentioned, online nature doesn't make it easy, uh, but Piazza is available for you to participate as much as you want. And yeah, Piazza actually is actually something I like participating in if there are good questions over there that uh, I find myself answering, I might, I, I might actually answer uh, them also. Uh, along with the TAs. Starting early is good, so whenever we release a lab, I would suggest at least skimming through and figuring out what it's about and what you need to do to set up the lab and figuring out uh, basically how to proceed. I think this is going to be important. If you want feedback, come to office hours. There are online office hours. You can see that online, and uh, the TAs are going to be uh, friendly. Uh, but of course, uh, use that to your benefit, but don't abuse it, basically. Don't expect the TAs to solve the problems for you, solve everything for you in the end. This is, this is an advanced course. 
this is not a very basic course. And even in basic courses, there's some expectation that you don't ask every single question to uh, the TA in the end. So come to office hours to seek help, but do, do, uh, do your own due diligence uh, to actually solve the problems yourself, because that's where real learning happens, in my opinion, solving the problems yourself. And remember always that chance favors a prepared mind. This is not a quote from me, but a quote from Luis Pastor uh, that says, basically, if you want to be lucky, be prepared. And that's true for research. That's true for, uh, in my opinion, and, and pretty much everything in life, basically. If you're prepared for something, uh, then you have the right mindset to see the opportunities. If you don't have the right mindset and if you're not prepared, if you're not done your due diligence, then you may actually see some, uh, you, there might be some opportunity that's waiting next to you. I don't know that what that opportunity could be. It could be a new idea uh, to be discovered. It could be uh, some new business opportunity uh, to be taken. Uh, it could be a startup opportunity. It could be something, basically. Basically, you may not be able to see that, right? And as a result, that opportunity goes away without you uh, seeing it because you just didn't have the... Uh, appropriate education and preparation for it to realize that is even an opportunity and education and preparation comes from I believe everything that I mentioned that above over here working hard learning the material reading doing the readings basically being prepared uh, at, a, at a both mindset level and a, and a preparation maturity level such that these opportunities don't pass you by and again learning is very personal every student has a different level to reach uh, to the point where you don't pass by any opportunity. So that level is actually very personal. Uh, yeah, there's a variation in humans also, clearly. So th this learning is really uh, something that we cannot fully control. But personally, you need to figure out what is the right amount of uh, learning that you need to do such that you actually very uh, you actually are good at uh, pulling the chance on your side and not not missing opportunities. Okay, so how you prepare your and manage your time is very important. That's true, I think, in general, uh, when you're at the top school. But it's true in this course also, since this is a heavy course. There will be many lab and homework assignments, so they will take time, start early, work hard. Now, the good thing is we have removed one exam compared to past years. So now we have only one exam. The course is less exam-oriented and more project and homework oriented. So, uh, uh, so th there's less work compared to past semesters, in my opinion. And it will be a heavy course regardless. It's an eight-credit course. What do you expect? Uh, however, I think uh, the benefit, there's always a cost and benefit, right? You, you cannot gain something for free. And the cost here is, I mean, you have to pay your dues to actually uh, study hard, work hard. But you will learn a lot of fascinating topics and understand how my computing platform works. And hopefully, in my opinion, uh, if you approach uh, the course uh, with a particularly good mindset, then hopefully this will change how you look at and think about the designs around you. And these are not just computer designs. Uh, these are designs in general uh, that are out there. Uh, and I think uh, I've, I've heard this uh, positive feedback from many students who have taken my course and that have had the right mindset to actually look at the world this way. It opens up a different way, way of thinking in the end. Okay, I don't like talking too much about evaluation, especially in master's course, but we have to evaluate you at some point. And uh, for this, uh, basically, we're going to rely a lot on these three things. Uh, most important part is project assignments. These are lab assignments. There will be five of them. Each of them will be around 10%. And you can see that half of your grade is determined by this. So they're important, clearly. And I would suggest not starting them in the last moment. Uh, and again, uh, for this, we'll, we will also have extra credit assignments that are built into the lab assignments. So you can actually do the extra credits and gain even more than 50% of the course grade if you actually do perfect, uh, do everything perfectly, plus the extra credit. So extra credit is actually fun because most of the time we will enable you to exercise your creativity or design skills. So you can actually add something on your own to these extra credit portions of the projects and labs. Okay, the next part is final exam. It's 35%. It used to be larger with multiple exams, but now we got rid of multiple exams. So there's only one exam at the end. And we expect that this will happen on the last week of the class you or take, we will decide that uh, closer uh, to when the last week comes. Uh, but it's going to be an important portion also. And you can see a lot of past uh, final exams. You can see different styles that we have used in uh, final exam, different styles for different questions. So uh, I don't think you will be surprised in terms of questions. But of course, uh, we will test understanding and insight. Uh, we will not uh, really... Uh, and of course, how, uh, how, how well you can solve a problem, right? Uh, if you're understanding something, you should not take 
uh, 10 hours to solve a, a problem that's given to you and we have limited time clearly 180 minutes in this case uh, so we will expect uh, some time bound in terms of solving the problem and uh, you can take a look at final exams and we will actually solve some questions from homeworks and exams uh, as we get closer or in the discussion sessions. And homeworks are 15%. You will see that homeworks are important and there will be a lot of questions on the homework. There will be papers to review, but these will really prepare you uh, for, for uh, maybe your projects, but more so for the exam. And in general, it will, en it will enhance you because it will enable you to do critical thinking. For example, we will have review assignments for different papers and those are the places where you can really exercise your critical thinking. Okay, more on this later, we will talk more about that uh, and if there are questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact us. Okay, so course goals, again, uh, this is a more detailed version. Basically, hopefully you will be familiarized in computer system design uh, with both fundamental operation principles and design trade-offs of processor, memory, and platform architectures in today's system. So we will see the state of the art. If you were looking for the state of the art, we will actually talk about the state of the art uh, in this course and go beyond the one. So of course state of the art uh, will come with a strong emphasis on fundamental design trade-offs and key current and future issues as you have experienced in the past two lectures also. And I will strongly emphasize looking backward, forward, up and down because as I mentioned earlier an architect is someone who has eyes on all parts of their head and you will be able to hopefully make these different trade-offs that we've discussed by looking to the past, looking to the future, looking up the stack and looking down the stack and hopefully you will learn how to be a good architect this way. And the second part is the more practical part in terms of the goal. We would like to provide you the necessary background experience to design, implement and evaluate a modern processor by performing hands-on simulator implementation. And this is exactly how things progress in uh, industry. Uh, you need a simulator to verify your ideas initially and then of course you uh, progressively refine that simulator and then you eventually decide to build hardware and that's where we're starting from the computer architecture level, which is really the simulation part uh, to begin with. Of course, before the simulation part, there's a part where you convince that you want to have some sort of uh, idea, and this may be a good idea. There's some analytical thinking and modeling parts, but we will do some of that in the lectures, uh, but it's, it's not easy to do that in the labs. Maybe you will do that in the extra credit portions of the labs. So the, uh, the extra credit portions of the labs are going to be important for your growth and development. And uh, in the labs, uh, there is a strong emphasis on functionality. The first step is making it work, of course. And of course, you will do hands-on design to make it work, and you will need to implement it. And then the next part is really efficiency. So we will actually have some labs where uh, maybe we will have some efficiency com uh, competitions in terms of how, how good your cache is, let's say. Okay, so making things work and realizing ideas, which is what an architect does. Uh, to build the future is what uh, we're interested in with these labs. So this handle and component will be very, very valuable, hopefully, uh, to you. So from my viewpoint, lectures are the more theoretical components. I mean, it's not really theory, clearly, but theoretical in the sense that you analyze things uh, by thinking as opposed to by doing. Uh, and that, those are complemented with uh, the, the labs where you analyze things uh, by doing as opposed to just thinking. So you'll be doing as well as thinking in the labs. And by nature, it's going to be very hard to cover as much material hands-on in the lab. So we'll have only five labs and that's going to cover only a small fraction of what we're going to cover in the lecture. So lectures are important but uh, and, and important to understand things. Uh, labs will give you a flavor of what goes on uh, in hands-on computer architecture but it will not expose you to everything that we cover in lectures clearly. Okay, so hopefully you've already figured out that course website is really important and if you actually click this, you will go to this course website. Uh, I can actually do that also. So this is, uh, let me go back to my web page over here. Actually, there should be a link from here. But yeah, currently teaching, I guess uh, I don't have the link up yet, but this is last year's website, which could be also valuable to you because not a lot is going to be changed. But basically you can see the different materials in the course website. You already see that uh, these slides that I'm just presenting are up, but not the video yet. But you can also see the uh, videos that uh, we have already covered, Introduction and Basics, for example. We vet all the videos before we put out also. So you can, if, you, if, if you're interested in something uh, that we've already covered, you can go back over here. But the website also has the readings. You can see that uh, some of the readings that we've, well, although hopefully all of the readings that we've covered so far in different lectures. And uh, you can see that homeworks will be posted. Oh, I'm going to talk about homework. This date is actually wrong, but homework zero is something that we would expect you to uh, 
uh, fill out by next week, and I'm going to talk about that briefly. And it's basically a student information sheet. And then labs, the first lab is already posted, as we discussed, and the due date is already published over here. Exams, you can see the past exams over here. So uh, this is reasonably well organized. We're not going to have a midterm exam for this incarnation of the course, but you can see that midterm and final exams are cover the entire course. So this is a good question bank for you to actually take a look at. And also, I think some of these questions are really interesting, frankly. Some of them we prepared actually very, very, we prepared all of the questions very, very carefully. So we vetted them. We have a vetting procedure that uh, takes a lot of time. So uh, we are proud of actually these questions. Some of these questions are actually, I think, uh, very insightful. You can find the related courses and some tutorials. We're going to add some more tutorials also over here. Uh, but basically, this is the website. So hopefully, you, and you can also go to the announcements and see uh, different announcements that we may put. We will also announce things on Moodle and Piazza. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, I think I would suggest going to the YouTube channel. That's important uh, for you to also know. And YouTube channel will uh, actually have these videos. Uh, I wish my computers was faster, so we don't we don't have to do all of this. Anyway, okay, so that's the website. Let me get back. So uh, everything is posted on the website, as you just saw, plus other useful information for the course. And please check frequently for announcements and due dates. Okay, as I mentioned, there is a homework assignment. This is really easy. This is basically information about yourself that you need to fill in by September 30th. And there is instructions on how to submit it. And all future grading is predicated on homework zero because we would really like you uh, like to know uh, about you while you're taking this course. I think this is a very simple thing that you can fill out. Uh, and you can, you can you know, of course, you, you can do a PDF, right? This is not a hard copy. Uh, please send a, uh, send a soft copy and upload it to the Moodle platform. So this should be hopefully simple. This is something that I ask uh, from students in all my courses so that I can get to know them a bit more personally, especially these days with online courses. It's not, uh, that's something that's not easy, as you know. Okay, so heads up, this is my last slide. We will have a few required review assignments uh, due likely at the end of next week. Uh, homework one will be out this week, uh, so we will communicate them soon. Usually a good algorithm is uh, a homework is out and two weeks after it's due. When a lab is out two weeks after it's due, uh, uh, if you have questions, we can talk about it and we will communicate more information on how to do the late things and etc. So please check the website uh, and some of these will also be announced on Lecture or Moodle or Piazza, but basically you will get to know about things uh, that are due. And lab one is already uh, out as you probably have heard. Okay. So that's the end of this short video lecture. Yeah, I look forward to seeing everyone uh, in, the, in the next lecture. Take care.